Hi, I'm Tom O'Grady and I'm a tutor at Point Blank. In my career, I've worked with artists such as Don Blackman, Kirk DiGiorgio, Underground Resistance and Bob Power. I've recorded at studios such as Abbey Road, Maida Vale and Sunset Sound in LA. Both my parents play the piano and I remember being put to bed at an age where I was just about able to walk and I remember hearing my dad play Gershwin Studies, that's what I found out was later on and uh, even though my parents thought I was asleep. I'd get out of bed and just listen from the, the landing upstairs. In terms of composing music, it was a lot later, but I started learning the piano when I was about four. So um, I was quite lucky that my mum was a piano teacher and my dad plays quite seriously. So yeah, but it took a lot longer for me to actually get to the point of composing music. I went down the classically trained route. So my mum taught me until I was about 11 or 12. Then we started falling out because typically you need a teacher who's not a parent. So I went to a family friend who's a concert pianist and then, yeah, I still have lessons every so often actually. It took a while to discover my influences. I think when I first picked up the piano, it was hearing my dad and my mum both play and I really loved composers like Liszt, Rachmaninoff. And I think looking back on that, that was mainly the harmony, things like that. So I've always loved chords. My main inspirations, the things that I remember being turning points, happened when I was in my teens. And that's when I discovered Jamiroquai. And I remember going home to my mum saying, I love the sound of that keyboard, what is it? And she didn't know, but it was a Fender Rhodes. So that was, that was my first discovery of the Rhodes. And then I uh, borrowed Headhunters from the school CD library. And I just remember the first time I heard that and it blew me away. So I think that those are my main inspirations and they still are. Working with musicians who are not trained on an instrument as well, I've, I've had quite a lot of experience of that and I can play by ear. So I think there's often quite a lot of prejudice on one side or another, you know, classically trained people might look at uh, people who are not instrumentally trained and think, oh, you know, they should, they should be able to do what we do. And I think a lot of people who play by ear, who play by instinct, look at classically trained musicians and think they're quite uptight and they're very kind of restricted to, to what they've learnt. Um, and it's not necessarily true, you can, yeah, you can happily do both. I'm glad that I get to, to work with the, the communication methods that I've built up working with other non-instrumentally trained musicians. Um, and I think it's all, almost unanimous that um, coming to the composition course, a lot of people are doing it not only to build up skills in terms of composition, but actually to get over that hurdle of finishing a song. And I really understand that feeling because it took me a lot of time to actually finish songs. There were, there were many years where I was coming up with ideas and never had this self-conviction to think that was worth running with. So I just had scraps of paper with chords on or thing, ideas. So I think that's, that's the most rewarding thing. It's, it's actually seeing people go through the course and they're learning theory um, and there's no kind of redundant score reading or anything like that. But the, the best thing is if they actually finish a composition. Because I think once you've done your first one, then you're well on your way to the second, third, tenth. So I think the courses are very well thought out. As I said, I predominantly do electronic music composition, but I do think it's a very well structured course with a, a specific end goal and it cuts out a lot of the essentially redundant theory that people um, would usually have to go through in order to compose a song. Um. Um. Um.